Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. In this lab, we will take a look at port security. Port security is a security function which can be configured on switch interfaces and controls which MAC addresses are allowed on which interfaces. MAC addresses are 48-bit addresses which are tied to the physical device such as a network interface card on a computer. Port security allows us to ensure that only the intended devices are allowed to communicate over a given switch port. We will do a few labs to practice port security. In this first lab, let's look at and configure some basic functions of port security on two switches, switch one and switch two, which each have one PC connected to them. Try to complete the lab yourself first, then continue watching this video if you have trouble, or watch it after to check your solution. Step 1 tells us to find the MAC address of switch 2 by using the CLI of switch 1 and the reverse. So let's go on switch 1 first. Enable. Use the command show MAC address hyphen table to display the list of known MAC addresses on the switch. Switch 1 knows one MAC address. Its type is dynamic, meaning that we didn't manually configure this MAC address. It was learned by receiving a packet on the port displayed here, fast ethernet 01. That's the MAC address of switch 2. Now let's go on switch 2. Enable, show MAC address table. This here is the MAC address of switch 1, learned dynamically on the fast ethernet 01 port. Step two asks us why the MAC addresses of PC1 and PC2 don't appear in the MAC address table, even though switch one and switch two appear in each other's tables. If you have studied spanning tree protocol already, you know that switches send each other BPDUs, bridge protocol data units, at regular intervals. The switches learned each other's MAC addresses via these BPDU packets. However, no traffic has passed from the PCs to the switches yet, so they are unaware of the PC's MAC addresses at this point. Step 3 tells us to ping between the PCs and then check the MAC address tables of the switches. If we ping between the PCs, switch 1 should have one dynamically learned MAC address on its fast Ethernet 02 port, that of PC1, and two dynamically learned MAC addresses on its fast Ethernet 01 port, those of switch 2 and PC2. Likewise, switch 2 should have one dynamically learned MAC address on its fast Ethernet 02 port, that of PC2, and two dynamically learned MAC addresses on its fast Ethernet 01 port, those of switch 1 and PC1. So I'll go on PC1 and ping PC2. Ping 192. Dot one six eight dot one dot twelve. There we go. Now let's go on switch one. Show MAC address table. Here is the MAC address of switch two we saw before. This other MAC address on fast Ethernet zero one must be PC twos, and the MAC address on fast Ethernet zero two must be PC ones. Let's check on switch two also. Show MAC address table. Here's switch 1's MAC address. This one is also on fast Ethernet 01, so it must be PC 1's. And this MAC address, learned on fast Ethernet 02, must be PC 2's. Step 4 is to enable port security on the switch interfaces connected to PCs, so fast Ethernet 02 of each switch. In this lab, we will configure the switches so that switch 1 only accepts traffic from PC1 on its fast Ethernet 02 interface, and switch 2 only accepts traffic from PC2 on its fast Ethernet 02 interface. First, we must enable it at the interface level. Let's go on switch 1 again. Conf T, interface F02. You can enable port security with the command switch port port security but command rejected. Fast Ethernet 02 is a dynamic port. What does this mean? 
Well, one rule of port security is that it can't be enabled on a trunk port. It can only be enabled on an access port. Although this switch port is currently functioning as an access port, it's actually in dynamic mode, meaning that if it were to be connected to a switch port configured as a trunk, it would start functioning as a trunk. The switch port has to be explicitly configured as an access port if you want to enable port security on it. So, switch port mode access. Switch port, port security. That's it. Let's go on switch two now. Conf T, interface F02. Switch port mode access. Switch port, port security. That's all you have to do to initially configure port security. Step five first asks us how many MAC addresses are allowed on a port security interface by default. Well, let's use a show command to find out. Since we're already on switch two, let's start here. Do show port security. Look here next to fast ethernet zero two. The MAC secure address count is one. Remember that for the test. That is the default number of MAC addresses allowed on the switch port. Because this is the default, we don't technically have to configure this. However, it's often a good idea to configure important settings like this just to be sure. And for our purposes, it's good to go through the motions to practice. So use this command, switch port, port security, maximum one. Now let's do it on switch one too. Switch port, port security, maximum one. That's all for step five. Step six asks us another question. What is the default action in the event of a port security violation? Of course, when we configure port security, there has to be some action that the switch takes in the event that the rules we configured are violated. There are three possibilities. The first is protect which drops traffic from any MAC addresses which are not allowed on the port. That's it. It doesn't shut down the interface or display any messages. It doesn't even increase the violation counter that the switch keeps. The second option is restrict, which again drops all traffic from MAC addresses which aren't allowed. It also displays a message on the switch and increases the violation counter on the switch. The third one is shut down which puts the switch port into an error disabled state, effectively shutting down the interface, as well as increasing the violation counter. Make sure you know the differences between these three for the test. Now, as for which one is the default, we can use the same command as before. Do show port security. Here at the end under security action, it says shut down. So there's our answer. The default port security violation action is shut down. Another thing to remember for the test. Again, even though this is default, let's go through the command to configure it. Switch port port security violation. Now I'll use the question mark to show you the options. Here are the three options I mentioned earlier. Protect, restrict, shut down. Let's go with the default of shut down. Now on switch two. Switch port, port security, violation, shutdown. The steps are all complete, but I want to show one more thing. Let me ping from PC1 to PC2 again. Ping 192.168.1.12. Now I'll go on switch one. And show port security address. As you can see, this command shows the MAC address of PC1, which Switch1 has dynamically added as a secure MAC address on Fast Ethernet 02. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comments section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.